In today's video, we're going to dive into DaVinci Resolve and make some simple found footage ghost effects. Let's get to work. I love found footage ghost movies. The Blair Witch Project and Paranormal Activity were some of my favorites when I was younger, and the fact that the combined budget for both of those movies was less than $100,000 continues to serve as inspiration for my own filmmaking endeavors. And as luck would have it, creating found footage hauntings are pretty easy to do in DaVinci Resolve. You don't really even need to go into the Fusion page. Heads up though, we are going into Fusion. Just for a second though, to pull off these effects, you'll need a shot of all the effects you're doing and, as usual, a clean plate. In my case, I needed two clean plates, one with the door closed and another with the doors open. Then, once you have your footage in DaVinci Resolve, place your clean plate on your video track one, loop it until you have the desired length, and create a compound clip. Then, if you have a second clean plate like I do, Repeat the process again. The first effect in this sketch was the rocking horse moving on its own. To make the rocking horse move, I simply moved the rocking chair while filming, then jumped out of the way. Then in post, I placed the clip in the timeline, lowered the opacity, and trimmed the clip so it looked like it was starting from its still position. Once that was done, I headed to the color page and used a power window to mask out the rocking horse so you couldn't see my shadow coming from my office. Next, we had the door opening on its own, which which we did by having my daughter stand in her room and open the door. To add it to our timeline, we just set in and out points in our footage and placed the clip in our timeline where we wanted it, and then started our open door clean plate at the end of the door opening clip. The next effect we did, which you'll actually find in a few places throughout this clip, is one that I like to call the stutter effect. But before we get into that, I would really appreciate you guys giving my daughter some love in the comments. She was a huge part of making this video possible, and this was her acting debut, so I'm sure she'd love to know what you all thought. Oh, and on your way down there, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. To create the stutter effect, simply place your footage over your clean plate, trim out the parts you don't want, then cut and remove every other frame. Then to keep things organized, create a compound clip and place it on a new track. At this point, you might notice that each effect we're doing is going on its own video track. The reason why we do this is because if we had them all on the same track, then when we went to go create our fusion composition later, each effect would be combined into a single media in node, and we don't want that. It's a important tip that I found out the hard way. The rest of the edit page work was more of the same, timing up the different segments, using power windows, and nailing down the pacing. Like I said, most of these things are pretty easy to recreate. The only thing I will say is to be aware of lighting and shadow changes. Since we had some open windows and people standing in different places throughout the scene, we ended up having to use a lot of freeze frames and power windows in order to maintain consistent shadows where we needed it. But once we nailed down our timeline, we highlighted all of the new clips, created a new fusion clip, and headed to the fusion page. The reason why we're heading to the fusion page is to create a handheld look. And yes, I know we could have easily done this just using an adjustment clip and the camera shake effect on the edit page, but recently I've been exploring modifiers in Fusion and have really loved the results I've gotten with the Perturb modifier. To do this, add a transform node to the end of your composition, then in the inspector, right click on center and choose modify with Perturb. 
then head to the modifiers tab. The settings here are completely optional, but I personally like a more subtle effect, so I bring the X and Y scales down to around 0.1, crank up the random seed to around 2300, then drop my strength and wobble. This will give you a nice subtle handheld look. When you're all said and done, you might find that your footage doesn't quite stay in frame, so head back to the tools tab and increase the size to compensate and you're done. Real quick, let me know in the comments if you want a more detailed tutorial on getting the handheld look in Fusion. If enough people want it, I'll put it on the list. Once you have your handheld look dialed in, it's time to head to the color page. Keep in mind that unlike most projects, we're not trying to make this look like a professional grade. This isn't supposed to be fancy. In fact, just the opposite. What we're trying to do is make this look like raw, unedited footage that someone likely caught with a cheap consumer grade camera or phone. This is kind of the video equivalent of spending three hours making it look like you just rolled out of bed. But before we could get into all of that, we had to make this scene look like it was shot at night. To do this, we used curves to bring down the overall brightness, brought down the color temperature, and dropped the saturation to around 30. This got us most of the way there, but the bedroom on the left was still too bright thanks to the natural sunlight coming through the window. So in a new node, we created a power window and used curves to bring down the brightness again, then track that window throughout the scene. Once that was done, on a new serial node, we increased the contrast and sharpness to make the footage look less like a cinema camera and more like something cheaper. Then to finish it all off, we added some film grain and cranked the grain opacity to make it look like this was filmed on a camera that would struggle in low light. When it was all said and done, my nice pretty Blackmagic RAW footage had been turned into a grainy, slightly shaky mess then it was time for sound design. Now, I didn't record any audio when I filmed this, which means I had to build everything up from scratch. So I headed over to today's sponsor, Artlist, and started downloading just about every haunted house sound I could think of. And they weren't hard to find either. Not only does Artlist have a huge library of music and sound effects, but they've also got some of the best search filters I've ever seen, and their sound effects are categorized really well, which I know that sounds like a silly thing to be excited about, but when it comes to searching for sounds for your project, which as we all know can take hours, that stuff becomes really important really quick. Plus, Artlist has some of the most flexible pricing out there with three different plans to choose from, two of which have an unlimited license that allows you to use their music and sound effects on YouTube, social media, commercial work, and even film and television. Artlist will be linked below if you want to check them out, and if you sign up using that link, you'll get two months free on top of an annual subscription. So huge thank you to Artlist for sponsoring this video and for continuing to support creators like me. Let's get back to sound design. Once I had all my audio files in DaVinci Resolve, I got to work adding all of my room tone and sound effects to the timeline. And similar to my approach to color grading, I didn't want this to sound like a well-produced sound stage. I wanted this to sound like it was all recorded on the internal mic from either a camera or a cell phone. So I raised the volume on the room tone clip, lowered the volume on everything else, and then compressed the hell out of the whole thing. <laughs> to be honest, I think the crying and laughing sounds might have come out a little too clear for my liking, but that's one of the reasons why we do these things, so we can practice and get better and pass a little knowledge on to you guys. Speaking of which, if you ever try and recreate an effect that I do on this channel, I'd love to see it, so make sure to tag me in all of the things. Then go watch this video right here, and until next time, don't forget to go out and make stuff. Thanks for watching.